Welcome to the Boxing Bookie. It is good to be back. It is good to be back. Uh, we're going to get into a good one today. Uh, a fight that I'm really interested in seeing. Uh, Hamza Siraz and Liam Williams. This is a really, really top-notch fight. Uh, it's going to be an intriguing fight. Like, share, and subscribe. Follow 3D Boxing, 3D Boxing Blog, and all forms of social media. The Boxing Bookie comes out to you for every major fight, and we are going to get this fight in the U.S. on ESPN+. Plus. That's on Saturday. Uh, this is a great fight. I'm into this. Uh, we're going to check this out. We're going to get into this fight. Also, please subscribe to the other channel, Texas Boxing Scene. Uh, all proceeds from that channel go to Texas Autism Research and Recovery. Please join the Patreon below. The link is in the description. Uh, if you join the Patreon, you uh, get the Lock of the Week. You get a free T-shirt. You get a ton of perks uh, just for $5 a month. Just the Lock of the Week can make you a millionaire if you do it every week uh, for years. <laughs> um, but there's a ton of perks there. Uh, the boxing bookie doesn't bet. I don't gamble, but I always use DraftKings when I'm on this. I think DraftKings has a uh, is user fr is user friendly. I like the interface, and it's it's uh, it gives pretty good odds. <clears throat> now let's get into uh, today's show. Hamza Shiraz is 24 years old. He's six foot three. He's 18 and 0 with 14 knockouts. I like this prospect a lot. He's tall and long. He's got an excellent jab. He goes upstairs, downstairs. He mixes up with a really, really nice, I was going to say good power. I, I think he's got great power. We're fitting to find out if it's good or great, right? And then Liam Williams is going to be a good test in that because he's a guy that's durable. If he can get him out, and, and it, it's going to be a testament to his power. He's a really, really good combination puncher. And he's sharp with it. Like He, he lands accurate with his shots. He really uses his height well. He uses his height and reach. You know, like some guys who I think use their length well, like Brandon Figueroa. You know, Brandon Figueroa fights on your chest. So what am I talking about? Well, he's long, right? And Figueroa is on you, and then, like, you step away, and then he's just, you know, one step, and he's right back on you. You can't really get away from him. He doesn't fight like that. He, he fights tall and long, right? Like where Figueroa only fights long. He fights tall and long. He keeps you at range, straight shots, down the pipe, combinations. He's good. He's got a good defensive technique, although he's not, you know, impossible to hit. He's, he's, he's tall and long, so he's not easy to hit either. I really like this prospect. The best attribute of him is, is his power, that his power is magnified by, you know, just landing on the button, landing on the vital spots. You know, he's a basic jab cross fighter with uncommon power. And and that's how – and uncommon height too. But I, I would say he's a, he's a high-level basic fighter with uncommon power. That's how I, I would describe him. What I really like about him is he's improves from fight to fight. I went and I watched his last two fights. And then I went back and watched some of his early fights. And if you would have told me, you know, in the – in his early fights, even up to the uh, – it was Scott J Ryan Kelly. Ryan Kelly was his first step up fight. <clears throat> if you would have told me at that time, that was in 2019, 11 30, 2019, that this was going to be a world class prospect, I would have thought you were bugging, right? And in his next fight against Paul Keene, he got way better. And then he kept getting better and better and better. Bradley Skeet, Jez Smith, uh, Wilson River Bent, and then the Russian fellow, that name I'm not even going to try to say, was his last fight, second round knockout. He's got the streak now of, of early knockouts. His second round knockout, second round knockout, fifth round knockout, second round knockout, his last four fights, he's going nine with Bradley Skeet. I like him to continue that. This is a, a middleweight that should have everyone on notice. I, I, I think, honestly, if we were just saying who are the best prospects in the UK, period, Regardless of weight class, Hamza Shiraz is on that list. Patient with his shots. He's accurate with his shots. He mixes up his shots well. Really good jab. Mixes the jab upstairs, downstairs. Feet are a little mechanical, right? Like, you know, he's still, you know, he's a six foot three middleweight. He's still growing into that. He's 24. You know, I like to see what he looks at, like 26, 27. 
but he may get to a world title by then. Like he really, 20, you know, two years out, I, I don't think that's unrealistic. I think that's very realistic. I, I think this Liam Williams is going to be a good test. Uh, Liam Williams is a decent fighter, a veteran. He's been in Demetrius Andre. He's been in tough. He's gone the distance. Um, if if, if uh, Siraz can get him out, that's telling. He's coming off a first round knock. I, I, I think Liam Williams is pretty good pop. You know, he's looking. He lost to uh, Andre and Eubank in, in consecutive fights, and he lost wide in both of them. So he operates below the world class level. We know that, but he's he's a talented fighter. Good, you know, UK European level guy. Uh, you know, he's going to beat everyone until he gets to the world level. He beat Alantez Fox. He beat Mark Heffron. These are names. These are names, right? He lost to Liam Smith twice, uh, but this is a good fighter. This is this is a guy that is going to make life tough for anyone. He's tough as nails, pressure, front foot guy, a little bit slow, a little bit slow in plotting. He just comes forward. He relies a little too much on one shot for me, but he's got a good jab when he uses it. He's got decent pop. His, his feet aren't quick, but you don't see him making sloppy mistakes with his feet. You don't see him crossing his feet. His footwork are good. He's never really off balance. So he knows how to fight, and he's got a little bit of pop, and he knows how to use his jab. He's not a bad fighter. Um, at the highest level, he comes up short. Anything below that, he's dangerous. So we're going to find out about Shiraz, right? We sure are. So how do I like this? I like Shiraz to win the fight. Uh, I think Shiraz stops him. So here's what we're going to do. Let's share this. Let's get this pulled up. Shiraz is minus 600, which I thought was why. I really thought the odds were going to be closer on this. I thought it was going to be more like 300, really, maybe 400, somewhere 350 like that. I was a little surprised when I saw that the odds makers had it this way. I, I, I think the book is right. Like I, I would say Shiraz is a 6-1 to one favorite. I, I, you know, if I was handicapped in a fight, I would do that too. I just didn't think they'd be onto them like they are. But it is what it is. I am confident in Shiraz. This is a two times bet. It's going to make us 33 33. I like it. Lock in the money. Let's get to next week. Shiraz, is, and this is a great fight too to put in a parlay. If you want to do a parlay, I, I think you know, you do this, you do Tiafima Lopez, and you do Keyshawn Davis. That's a good parlay. S Sam Noakes for. These are good bets. I would do this. These are good bets. Uh, but Shiraz, minus 600 times two. Uh, two and a half bet makes you 33 33. Again, these are just locking in money. You know, uh, this is a step up fight for Shiraz. I like to see how he does. I think he can get a knockout. If you want to take Shiraz by knockout, it's plus 320. If you want to do that. I'm just taking Shiraz on the money line. Uh, I, I think he'll get the knockout, but let's just let, let's just cast the profits, right? Because it's oh, I, that's by decision. I'm sorry. Shiraz by KO is paying minus 190. Shiraz by KO is I'm sorry. Shiraz by KO is paying one, minus 190. You can take it if you want. You know, it, it, it's better. Um. But like I said, Liam Williams is, is tough as nails. He's really, really tough. He's gone the distance with Eubank. He's gone the distance with Andre. I'm going to lay off of it, even though I, I think this is going to hit. It's not paying amazing odds. If it was paying this, if it's paying plus 320, yeah, I would take it. It's not, I clicked the wrong button. Minus 190. You can take it if you want. I'm not taking it. Uh, if it was my money, I would just bet this. Take the money. There's a lot of fights this week that we can lock in on, right? And there are just better bets than taking Hamza Shiraz by TKO minus 190, even though I do think it'll hit. Take the money line. Take Shiraz on the money line, minus 600 times two. Book it. Take the money. Take the profits. Let's move on to the next one. All right, guys, that's it. Let me know what you think. Leave your thoughts, comments below. Please like, share, and subscribe. Follow Boxing Bookie on all forms of social media. Uh, remember, we don't gamble, but if you do, I always use DraftKings. Uh, let's bring down the house together from Texas. 
Oh, also, please join the Patreon. The link is in the description. Like I said, you get all those free products you get. Uh, the lock of the week, which the lock of the week you guys have loved this week. So join the Patreon. You get the lock of the week this week. I'll make sure you get it. Uh, but get in as quickly as you can. Uh, also, follow me uh, at Texas Boxing Scene. That's Texas Boxing Scene. Um, it is February 7th, 2024, from Texas to the world. Thank you. And God bless. Don't miss a tweet, post, story, or video. 3D Boxing is on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Hit the subscribe button now to stay inside the ring.